Chris, you are a tennis legend and such an inspiration to so many. When you got that cancer diagnosis in 2010, how did you cope with the news and what made you share your story publicly? Well, I, uh, first, of course, I felt sorry for myself, but then immediately being a tennis player, I got into the solution. What do we have to do? Uh, it literally was like one minute from the time I got the news to the say, okay, let's let's get on with it. What what, what do we do next? Um, so I surrounded myself with with good people. Everything's put on hold, but as it turned out, that time. I didn't have to change anything with my schedule at all. It all worked out just really slotted in nicely with the, with the treatment and the, the, the uh, surgery and everything. But uh, it was a shock to the system because as an athlete, you know, you, you, you feel it when you get injured and then you, you ice it and it goes away or worst case, you have surgery and then you do rehab, then it goes away and you're back to normal. With this, you have no control. You you don't know really uh, if things are going to work out, and you just hope that the else will be with you. So, it was a rude awakening. Um, but being an athlete, um, again, being uh, you know, you have to be positive to be a champion and, and get into that mindset. So that that kicked in right away. Yeah, as an athlete, of course, you're so resilient. You know how to uh, battle through. But that's the thing. You are so fit and athletic as a former athlete. So what message do you have to those who think they can put off the screenings or <laughs> that they won't be at risk? Well, so I learned my lesson because uh, I didn't realize it was that long between mammograms. It turned out it was four years. I thought it was two years. It was four years. I changed. I moved. I changed doctors. So I, I just thought, oh, the, you know, I'll do it in the spring when I come back from Australia, and then you forget about it, and so I'll do it in the fall. And it was four years, and I was lucky that my diagnosis was probably happened the last year over those four years. It had been in the beginning, could have been a different story. So I, once I realized that, I thought I, I need to make it public to help, help women realize that they need to take care of themselves because it's so easy for us to put it off till you know next month next week and before you know it years have gone by uh so i felt that i have a platform and an, and an opportunity to make women aware of of not putting it off absolutely to catch it early how important is that and what message do you have why why should women just be so diligent about getting their mammograms? Well, so, some cancers are slow. Uh, too many of the breast cancers are really fast. So you really, every week counts, every month counts. Uh, the sooner you get uh, you get uh, diagnosed, the, the better outcome uh, you have, obviously. Whether it's the, the length of the treatment or the severity of the treatment or whether you survive. Uh, I mean, it literally is a, is a question of life and death. So. Uh, for me, I don't want to want to wait. Uh, and uh, after that, I never missed a doctor's appointment and have been very diligent since because it really hits you. So um, yeah, the sooner the better. I mean, uh, if there's any, if there's something wrong, great. You you can you know relax for another year. And if there is something going on, then you know it now rather than a couple of years from now when it's could be too late. Yeah, and you've been an advocate for WTA's acing cancer campaign. Why are you involved in this, and why is it special to you? Well, I was involved with it before I got the breast cancer, or, or uh, of course, I have. I have always kind of spoken out on, on issues, whether it affected me personally or not. But uh, when it does affect you personally, it really hits home, and uh, and I'm just really thrilled with this whole. Uh, relationship with Hologic and acing, acing cancer campaign it makes so much sense uh, as women athletes. Um, breast cancer is the number one killer for, for women, cancer killer for women. So if we can make a difference, we have made a difference. We know that. Uh, I've gotten plenty of letters and and tweets uh, from, from women that uh, were reminded to go take that test and uh, found they had cancer and they dealt with it and they survived because of it. So you know, every little bit that we do makes a difference down the road for many women. Yeah, speaking of tweets, you and Chrissy Everett, how have you to support each other, mm -hmm. even though on court tennis rivals, maybe, but yeah. off court allies? Well, we were always allies. Even when we were competitors, we, we were allies because we could relate to each other. You know, and it's only breast, breast or cancer survivors that relate to each other because they've been through it. 
and Chris had gone through cancer two years ago, uh, and uh, and I supported her, and then she was there for me when when I was going through my thing, and um, you know you you put differences aside certainly when it comes to uh, when it comes to an elf, and you know Chris and I we've been in each other's corner for many years, but this was a big battle, and so of course we were not going to uh, uh, not be there for each other. Yeah, this is a little bit different, but it reminds me of I was chatting with uh, Billie Jean King last week, and she was like, people think me and Bobby are enemies. No, we're good friends, you know, so you never really know who comes together. But you found out you were cancer-free. What was that initial feeling? What was the first thing that came to mind? It was just a massive relief because, uh, you know, when you first get diagnosed and you get into the solution, hopefully, mine was really complicated because I had two different cancers at the same time. So um, when I finally got the all clear on June 11th, it was a massive relief because it was an ongoing stress physically and emotionally for almost seven months. So that was a big boulder that came off my shoulders. So I felt, I really felt such a surge of energy after that that I'm uh, ready to you know do anything. Physically, I don't have the strength, but it was, I, I literally, I could have gone without sleep for a couple of days because there's such a surge of relief uh, that, um, yeah, you don't realize how much the stress takes out of you until it's not there. Yeah, you're involved with so many different initiatives. You do commentary at the slams. Was there anything you were afraid that maybe you wouldn't be able to get to do since you're dying? It was this... You know, you try to lead as much of a normal life as possible, but you still have to adapt everything to to the to the treatment, you know, to uh, to the protocol. What do I have to do? Where do I have to be? And um, and you take care of yourself, capital S first. Mm -hmm. But I was able to mishmash pretty much where I didn't really miss much uh, on the tennis front. There's just a couple of tournaments that I couldn't do for a tennis channel, but otherwise. Oh, my schedule didn't didn't change that much. Of course, seven weeks here in New York for the for the proton uh, therapy that was uh, in the winter. The, I thought oh, I'll go to the theater and go to the museums, you know, catch up on everything. Not once, not once. Didn't go to the theater, not once. So uh, you just do what you have to do to get well, and um, yeah, that's that takes precedence over everything. And then lastly. You would know, you were a touring pro, I was a touring pro. We put our doctor's appointments off. So what message do you have for the other athletes in the WTA, even in the ATP? What message do you have to them? Okay, maybe skip out on this week's tournament. Go get a screening. Yeah, uh, because if you have a niggly, if you pull a muscle, you go to the training room right away, you don't go next week. (laughs) You don't wait a year if you have a bad injury. So uh, you have to treat those doctor's appointments with as much importance as you treat your body. Uh, and um, yeah, you, you don't want to put that off because the more you put it off, the worse the outcome will be. And you, as athletes, you think I'm, indi- I'm uh, indestructible. You know, I'm so strong because you are physically strong, but this stuff you don't get, you don't, control and cancer certainly doesn't uh, exempt athletes from attacking them. So yeah, you pay attention to that stuff. So don't put it off.